Okay, so <clears throat> let, let's try to, to stay in time and uh, start the next session on IoT applications. Um, my name, for those who, who don't know me, I'm Oleg. I'm with Riot for you know, basically since the beginning. And um, I had the pleasure to uh, introduce uh, a few faces um, that I all already know, which is uh, pleasant as a, um, as a session chair. The first um, speaker is Gilles Doff uh, from um, Artone. And uh, I think you gave a presentation two years ago at the yeah, summit. Yeah, and four years ago too. <laughs> also so, about robotics. <laughs> um, well, the last time was two years ago, I guess. Yeah, two years ago, yeah. And um, so uh, Jill works as an uh, embedded software engineer um, and is um, a free software enthusiast um, for a long time already. And um, uh, in this talk, he's going to present us right in the context of uh, robotics. And um, so that's, a, I think, a very interesting um, part of, of IoT solutions. And I'm very um, curious to, to hear about uh, Right in this in this context in the next talk. So please give a warm welcome to, to Jill. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Hi, uh, hi everyone. Um, I'm really happy to be here first and to see you in person after um, years of, of COVID. Um, so my name is Jill, Jill Doff, and uh, I'm from the CodeGIP uh, Robotics Association, and I'm also from the Earthon Company. Um, and I will talk to, to you about uh, our experience in robotics with uh, Riot OS uh, here. And um, I'm here due to Ayrton, which allows me to be here. So many thanks to them for their support. So first, who am I more in details? Uh, I'm a technical leader and pr uh, project manager at Ayrton. Uh, I'm, my main technical skills are more Linux BSP and embedded Linux stuff. Maybe you know Yocto or Billroad distribution. Um, I'm also, uh, my favorite field uh, is uh, robotics, as you guess. And uh, station, uh, I'm also the Linux guy. And, and um, uh, the Kojip led me to use Riot the first time. Uh, now four or five years ago, and um, that's where I started to, to contribute in 2018 to drivers like the quadrature decoder or motor driver that I use in this robot. Uh, who are we uh, about Ayrton? Ayrton is a smart maker of connected device. Um, we assist and support our customer all along the product cycle life uh, from um, specification, uh, development, uh, and production, mass production. Uh, we mainly work in agility. And um, when I asked to, to Ayrton to sponsorize us, my boss, Adrien Desports, did not hesitate to say yes, uh, because it's in the DNA of the company to help and support projects like this one. So again, thanks to them for that. And I'm also the, the president of the COGIP Association. Um, I want you to, to introduce here the members, um, Paul, Samuel, Eric, so, and Solène. Um, Eric and I are the main developers of, uh, um, on the firmware I present you today. Uh, we are both involved in the Riot. Um, uh, we are both using Riot in the, in the development. So uh, he's more the C++ guy, and I'm more the low-level guy. So this robot was made, the robot we will talk about just after, was made for the U-Robot contest uh, with uh, qualifying um, phase, uh, which is the robotic, French Robotic Cup. Um, which uh, take place in La Roche-sur-Yon in the west, on the west coast of France. Uh, it's nearly uh, um, six, um, 80 teams uh, that will go through a step of homologation of the robot, mechani mechanical homologation uh, and, and um, um, behavior homologation. For example, you must be able to avoid uh, the opponent. Each team can have uh, two robots. 
uh, you can have one big robot or one small robot or two, uh, two small robots. Uh, we decided to make only one. It's already difficult to make one, so <laughs> we did not want to make two. Um, and uh, once you, the robot is uh, homologated, you go through uh, five series of match, nearly randomly uh, chosen between, uh, between opponents. Uh, between over uh, against over team, sorry, and uh, you have five matches of uh, 100 seconds. The robot must be totally autonomous. Uh, you have uh, an example here on the animated uh, picture. A robot is on the top. Is the one on the top? Is the beginning of the match, and he stopped moving, uh, grabbing uh, a statue. Uh, you have some elements you have to grab, you have to take, and of course it will. Um, if there is some actuators, and for these actuators, we need drivers. For the sensors, we need drivers, and we develop some of them for um, for our firmware, and they can be ported to, to Riot 2. So here is uh, Pegasus. Uh, the name comes from the first letter of our first name, mainly. So we can uh, hire new members, but their first name must start with an A or U because it's the only one may missing. <laughs> um, here are the hardware components. You have the uh, camera, uh, STM32 F446 board, where Riot is uh, is flashed, and we have a Raspberry a Raspberry Pi uh, P4, excuse me, uh, Pi4, and um, some servo motor Helix. Uh, 15D, that's a digital servo motor. And uh, DC brushless motors, um, Polabur motors, and uh, a LiDAR, LDS01, uh, a touchscreen linked to a Raspberry Pi P4, and a vacuum sensor and pump, and coding wheels. All the devices you see on the robot there are, um, are uh, driven by a riot, except the touchscreen. All the other one and the camera and the over, all the other one are driven by Riot. The robot is totally autonomous, and Riot is at the center of the of the the, the behavior and and of the robot. Um, Thirty-five centimeters maximum height, and um, one meter and twenty centimeters of perimeter. That's the maximum, and we are nearly to the maximum. So yeah, it's a baby like this, nearly, yeah. Uh, some more views of the robot, uh, cutted, cutted views. Uh, you have there the, the board, all the board are custom except the Raspberry, uh, the, the Raspberry uh, Pi 4. Um, you have the, the main board uh, in, the top, uh, in the top right corner. You have vacuum boards, in the in the right bottom corner uh, and rear and front view there. Here we are. You have the brushless uh, DC motors uh, um, 3D view of the board, uh, and you have the um, a photo of the dashboard that is on the touch screen. Um, I will come back to this just after loading. Okay. So here you have the dashboard that you just saw in photo just before. Uh, all is driven with a web interface there. So, uh, and it is linked um, to the STM32 and the firmware using UART uh, connection with protobuf messaging. So there you can't really see well because there is not the mouse pointer, but when you, um, when you um, enter a menu on the dashboard, it also in the menu in the uh, Riot OS shell because we developed over the Riot shell um, sub menu module that allow us to, to navigate. So we can navigate through the command line or through the dashboard with buttons. Here you have another video with a lot of components here. On the left, you have the monitor. It's, uh, it's, you can see it like a dashboard, but plus plus, we can do ready morphing. Oh, there is the sound. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I don't do that too much because it's... Uh... <laughs> um, 
um, yeah, so you have the, the monitor there, which is a dashboard plus plus. You can add uh, obstacles. The, the, red, um, the red objects you see on the, on the map are obstacles detected by the LiDAR. Uh, all is detected by uh, the firmware, which is using Riot through the, the, the LiDAR driver. And you can see the accuracy of the robot. So there we can add obstacle. You have the blue robot on the side, which is a fake robot that we can move to grab some cords on the, on the table. Uh, and we have different menu you have on the left and that you already see on the dashboard that you can select. And all the button pressed will end uh, into commands into the, the firmware uh, running Riot. Uh, yes, and you can see the accuracy with uh, PID control loop. So to do this, oh, I forgot the the, the curves. It's the curves of the speed and um, speed angular speed and linear speed on the on the top. It's just a picture of the robot there. Ah. Good. Um, so here is the firmware and the robot architecture. So Riot is just in the um, left corner at the top uh, on the STM32 um, with our firmware, MCU firmware. Uh, that's uh, the name of our firmware. And it's communicating through UART and protobuf messages with the copilot, which is on the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, the Raspberry Pi 4 had just a role of um, uh, making an interface, um, um, human interface with the touch screen uh, to the firmware. Uh, it will change in the future, but for now it's still this. And uh, you can monitor, uh, the, the, um, use the monitors that you saw previously in the dashboard through Wi-Fi and mainly socket IO and HTTP um, uh, protocols. So you can uh, monitor the robot using Wi-Fi. It's completely wireless. Something that is not uh, mentioned here is that we also program the robot in wireless. Um, uh, so uh, using the, the Raspberry Pi, MMIO, GPIO, so we can program it very fast and debug it without any cable. Um, okay. And one of the most important thing is that we can run the robot in simulation, pure simulation with no hardware at all due to the native architecture of Riot. And we developed a uh, um, driver for the, um, for the LiDAR to emulate the LiDAR with the monitor that can handle um, some kind of ray tracing. Each um, angle of the LiDAR for the measure is simulated using ray tracing with OpenGL. It touch the object in the, sim in the monitor, in the simulator, and the, um, we populate a shared memory to share uh, the information of the LiDAR. So um, we don't change any line of code and we can simulate the robot and every developer can use it um, to make some robot behavior or robot algorithm. Okay, here is the file tree of uh, m firmware. Um, to be honest, we just copy paste the Riot <laughs> file tree, uh, but there is a reason to that. Um, is that, for example, boards is the, uh, it's like it's all boards. Um, we won't mainline it, but for example, you have the drivers directory and we could um, mainline uh, create pull requests of each driver uh, in it uh, to Riot with re very slight modifications. Um, you have same for sys package. Uh, we have two package, we'll see that after. Uh, and, and sys. Uh, we have a Riot patches directory to apply patch to bring fixes uh, to Riot, but we, are on, we just only have one for now. And of course, we are using uh, Riot and uh, outside and, uh, and the drivers and already provide on drivers. So we moved to C++ uh, this year before we were in, in C, but we already tried to make some C-oriented programming using, uh, using C and you know, with structure, adding parameters for structure in the good order and 
that was it it is really painful uh, we reached the limit of uh, of c in that case so uh, we had to move to to uh, c++ and eric did that uh, because i'm only <laughs> involved in c and i studied c++ at school so now i study c++ again um, and we wanted that the the firmware reflect the python object model that is on the Raspberry Pi 4 to keep consistency between the, the both sides. Uh, and to do this, we, need, you use, we used Embedded Proto, that is one of the new package we created, um, uh, that is building uh, Embedded Proto, and Embedded Proto is using C++. So, um, and what is wonderful with C++ is new NDLET. So in new NDLET, we trusted. Uh, trusted is the good word. We you will see that after. Um, and we are building with G++ 9. Um, we can benefit of new C++ 20. Um, it will come later. And don't ask me. I'm not involved in that uh, in that feature. But I know that Eric will add new stuff around uh, C++ 20 features. So. Why in new NGLET we trusted? Uh, for the short story, we developed all the firmware uh, actions, the robot actions, uh, before the, the event, the a robot event. And we integrate, because we were short in time, we integrate on, on place. And when we put all the things together inside the robot, um, it fails. Yes, there <laughs> stack overflowed. What happens? Simply, we discovered that um, as it was working fine on native architecture. And using Valgrind, there is no memory leak, all was good. Uh, so what happens? Simply that we discovered that the current IP implementation is very um, uh, simple and um, only able to, uh, to allocate memory and not to deallocate. Mm -hmm. So the IP grows, 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 and boom. <laughs> Um, so it's give us, um, we enjoyed uh, 36 hours without sleeping of debugging. Uh, truly don't do that after 40 years old. It's really complicated. Um, and then we try to save what we can save, reducing the size of the, of the firmware and to be able to, to make the matches. But we have not um, uh, used all the capabilities we add on the robot. So in a riot to 2022.04, uh, Jens Wetrich, I hope I, don't, I pronounce it L, bring us the solution, um, ETL, the embedded template library. Um, we discovered it a bit late, but it's already in place now. We remove all dynamic allocation, we are using a pool of objects that's marvelous. It's working really great. Uh, and then we noticed that the no, with no dynamic allocation, um, the STM32F446 is nearly full. The RAM is nearly full um, at uh, 80%. <laughs> um, but now the system is deterministic and the memory consumption is known at, uh, at uh, build at compile time. Uh, and we wanted to monitor the fact that there is no new that is called elsewhere. So we overrided uh, the new operator to display a warning message in case of um, um, a new uh, operator is called again. A small example there. Yes, about the UART PB module we developed based on MBD Proto. Uh, it's simple, the protobuf uh, module used over UART to send message. Um, so we use uh, MBD Proto for its C++ implementation. And the sending steps are very simple. We send an ID, and there is an ID for each module. The, uh, on the other side, the received message has the ID, so we know the good callback to call. And uh, we send the protobuf message encoded in base, in base 64, uh, allowing us to send any kind of, of messages easily uh, to the cost of an, a small overhead, of course. And we send the same parator for next message, avoiding a collision or um, overwriting of message. 
So um, about the drivers and package uh, that could lead to Riot OS countries. So Riot OS that were already used, uh, the motor driver, uh, which is used to drive the brushless motors we have. Uh, it's a driver I developed uh, nearly four years ago for uh, the previous version of the robot that is already inside um, uh, Riot. You can develop, a, it's generic, you can develop uh, work with different kinds of motors we using as Ashbridge, brushed or brushless motors. And so we designed the electronics of the robot to be able to uh, use this driver. So we are using a PWVM and uh, um, direction uh, pine and brake pine. And so, yeah, it makes things really easy to integrate. Uh, the UART of duplex, which is used by the following driver, Elix Servo, which are digital servo, you add um, a demonstration on the side um, here. Uh, so it's very useful because it's very accurate. Um, and we can position them really precisely. Uh, I got inspired by another driver in Riot about this, but I had to re-implement the protocol as it is not the same than the one that I found. Uh, the LiDAR, the 2D LiDAR, we have a driver for this also using DMA on STM32 and not using DMA. Uh, it's uh, the LiDAR is measuring um, 360 measure, uh, one measure by degree and it stores the values into, into a buffer. Um, and a switch, an I2C switch, uh, the PCA9548, uh, which is related to the VL53LOX um, time of flight sensor we will use previously. And the SD21, which uh, is analog servo motor driver board. Um, in these drivers, the PCA, the SD21, uh, and the VL53LOX uh, driver are for us in our Cortex legacy. We don't, we will not use it anymore. So we will remove them uh, from the from the firmware. But before we will push them as drivers uh, in a in a pull request to Riot because that's not because they are not useful to us. That they can, cannot be useful to someone else. Uh, we use the ETL package and we created the embedded proto package to use the C++ protocol buffer implementation. Okay, and the vacuum pump driver that is very specific, so we can not do a contribution. So what's next? As I said, the STM32F446 is nearly full. Uh, you know, there's a lack of components. So we want to keep it for now. And we decided to move application code to the Raspberry Pi 4 and to rework the use we have of Riot OS. Instead of having one microcontrollers that have all the drivers and all the code, we will start to split things into several boards, smart devices with, uh, for example, with a power supply board, with one MCU, with Riot, with the same uh, um, uh, tool for communication with URPB and uh, other stuff. We want to improve low-level controllers. Uh, we want to be able to have more logging information. So we want to make uh, give some more space in the firmware to existing components that are um, lightweight today due to other components and make everyone uh, cohabit inside the, the, the microcontroller. And um, we think to move to uh, STM32H7 uh, with an internet stack, I think it's not uh, already supported in, uh, in Riot, uh, but we have some, why not uh, porting it? Uh, it would be really useful to uh, use internet for the protobuf link as if we have more modules, we need uh, a better communication than just you are because as you can see, it could be a bottleneck. And a question, should we move to CACONFIG also? Uh, we have a good make file integration. Uh, it works great. So for now, we don't want to touch it. If we have to do it, we will do it. But uh, it's a very low priority uh, action. Feel free to have a look. Feel free to download. All is open source and open hardware. You have the or general GitHub, the MCU firmware repository. 
uh, that's the firmware uh, using Riot. Electronics is coming soon. We are preparing the files to uh, push them on Git uh, on GitHub. You have all the mechanics on, on GradCAD. You can visualize the robot in 3D. You can download every file of the of the mechanics. Look, feel free. And uh, we still have a blocking issue. We don't have much. Um, one thing I must say is that Riot was really robust and reliable. We had really few, uh, really few bugs, not only really no bugs, maybe more integration stuff. Um, but we have one with uh, CDFP on native architecture when printing uh, double floats on Ubuntu after uh, 21.04 and above. Uh, so we tried everything. We don't understand that bug. It seemed to be linked to runtime, but it's really blocking for us because we cannot upgrade our computers to Ubuntu 22.4. Uh, so yes, if you want to help us, uh, have a look to this one. And thank you very much. Jim, are there any questions from the audience? I mean, I can also look it up on GitHub, but I'm interested, like the, the main architects of the software, are you going like with multiple threads or is it more like this um, one main group and you handle the events? No, we have several threads running. Uh, we change the priorities according to the threads, different period. Uh, in the past, it was very simple, so we did not use mutex or such kind of things. But now we introduced that because there is too much threads running. I can tell you how much threads are running um, simultaneously, but I think there is an early five or six threads, I think. Um, we develop a new module to monitor that also because there is the PS command that is very useful. But when you are not connected to the to the robot, you need to have the information. So we used um, you. We can display it. It is in, incoming, but we will be able to display the stack information and the heap information and um, um, any problem related to the threads using some kind, you know, um, some kind of equalizer. You know, it starts when you you are nearly eighty percent of consumption of the stack it will start to get uh, orange or red and something visual. Uh, so everyone that can develop on the robot uh, will see with something visual and alert will be thrown up. So that it's completely, we, we got inspired by the PS module. Finally, it's some kind of copy paste. We, we arrange and we send proof uh, protobuf to the, to the Raspberry Pi. Sorry? I wanted to know what COGIP stand for or what does it oh. mean? <laughs> Good question. COGIP uh, is due to um, a humoristic um, uh, series in the early, uh, in early 2000. Uh, and it was um, 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 pa parody, no? Of, of um, um, company films from the eighties, so it's really fun in French. So, <laughs> so yeah, it comes from there. Yeah, and yeah, do not hesitate to to easy visit us and contact us and come to the Eurobot contest. Really, it's really amazing um, to to assist to when it's a lovely place in France. Um, thanks a lot for a, a nice presentation and this uh, exciting work. And so um, it's more like a meta question on on the um, what do you think we should do as a community or, or, or to to get more exposure of Riot in the robotics world because like, you, you do uh, exciting stuff and uh, marvelous stuff and like uh, it seems like um, maybe a, some more. Um, uh, robotics project could uh, could use this base, uh, you know, and, and and so what 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 do you have any idea like what we could do to, you know, is is it do we have to uh, spit out some blog articles? Do we have to uh, go to a specific conferences? Do we what what do we have to do uh, or, or I don't know like uh, what, what's your uh, on this? Functionally, um, as I said, 
uh, Riot is really reliable. We don't have to, we don't have bug with Riot. Okay, we have bug with what we do of Riot, but we don't have bug with Riot. And um, one thing that is missing uh, for to make a product, because we are nearly of, we are very near of a product there. You just remove the application that is for a fun uh, robotic contest and you put a product application and it should work because uh, robots are using the same concept that we are using there. But uh, as we had the talk with Matthias just before about this, um, in robotics, you really need certification and you have a lack of certification on a riot. So on other operating system, you have a free Atos, you have a fork, which is safe Atos, which certified, but some tries of certification with Riot would help very much, yeah. So thank you very much again. I think we need uh, to postpone all other discussion for the next coffee break. Uh, pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you.